Buddy, welcome to another tutorial stream covering the Legends of the Dead update coming sometime in May. Last week we covered the diplomacy lifestyle and reframe there. We covered the diplomacy lifestyle and showed how you could unite Ireland without fighting anybody. This week we'll be showing the martial lifestyle and how you can unite Sicily by fighting everybody. So, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Again, this update is not live yet. This is a, a preview of a build coming up later in May as part of Legends of CK3. So if it looks a little different from your game, don't be surprised. Because it is different from your game. Your, your game will be updated there soon. First and foremost, the first thing we do is select the lifestyle. Since this is a martial gameplay, we're going to be going with martial. Surprise. Uh, looks like Robert started off with all the good stuff here. All the strategist uh, perks here are extremely useful for declaring war, such as reducing the cost of declaring a war. So right off the bat, we're good. Uh, going down the gallant tree, he has uh, a lot of perks useful for specific combat. Uh, I am a huge fan of the gallant uh, tree. Anything that can boost your knight effectiveness, it can be absolutely brutal later on in wars. I am a fan of the right side of the gallant tree. The left side is a little... 
it has uses, but it's not useful for what we're trying to pursue today. So since we've got, we have a, a great perk spread here already. We'll go into authority focus to try and secure the lands that we'll be conquering today. Because as we conquer them, their control will plummet. Because we're basically setting these places on fire. Okay, we have a dynasty legacy. Uh, this one's easy enough. House of Warriors for the knight effectiveness and prowess bonus. Glorious, glorious. Very glorious. Uh, we do have activities available for a grand tournament and a grand tour. We're not doing either of those right now. Let's look through that our situation money. log. Exactly, exactly. And you need money to go to war. And if you run out of money during a war, you're in a lot of trouble. Yes, you're, uh, the effectiveness of your army is just basically nosedives if you run out of money. Uh, we are going to station our men and arm garrisons because they receive uh, very substantial bonuses from the holdings they're hosted in. I don't believe we can station all of them yet, but that is just fine. Uh, right now, we're just going through and doing the, the basic gameplay setup. I don't really care about these. We're just educating our children. Normally, you'd want to care about this. We're not going to be playing long enough for it to matter. So we're, ju we're just going to neglect our children's education this time. So um, are we going to create an accolade? Ooh. We probably should. Accolades can be very useful for your knights, boost their effectiveness, etc., etc. Let's take uh, Turkey's here to call him a, an acclaimed knight here. First of the column, this will take the Marauder and Stalwart Accolade Attributes. And we will go ahead and create that. Costs us a little bit of prestige, not an issue. And as he uh, ranks up here, we'll get more and more modifiers out of that, and our knight will be more useful. Prestige isn't going to be an issue because we're just no. going to win glorious battle after glorious battle. Yeah, you, you don't have to worry about prestige when... You, it's just rolling in at the rate we're going for. Okay, so we do have some alliances we can negotiate. Most of them are inside of our realm. Uh, these aren't particularly useful for external wars, but it does mean that we don't have to worry about them basically starting trouble while we're trying to take care of things outside of our borders. So we will go ahead and negotiate those alliances. They'll accept them. Just rote set up here. Okay. We have, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. I will offend many people, but a cousin of ours with a good amount of troops will negotiate an alliance in, with him. Isn't he in Northern France? I mean, nobody's perfect. <laughs> it's just a long distance. Yeah. I mean, absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? Uh, and we won't negotiate an alliance with him because he doesn't really provide much and he'll just pull us into a bunch of wars and go away, you know? We'll manage. Okay. We are now finally ready to unpause. Uh, see a question or two about Roads to Power. We don't have any con concrete information on that yet. Uh, best we can tell you right now is that sometime in quarter three this year. When we have more to say, there will be a proper announcement. Keep an eye on our social media channels, forums, etc. You'll know when we post. What about the Croats or the Burgundians? What about them? We're, we're here to set fire to Sicily. So that was the wrong button. Okay. As we unpause, we can go ahead and start making our preparations here. We've got our alliances. More alliances. More alliances. Let's go ahead and uh, bump that speed up. We'll go ahead and churn through all of these. Someone's hosting a hunt. We're not particularly concerned about that. Ooh, we have a brother-in-law here. And no valid cast his belly against him. That's okay. And now we have our first Legends of CK event here. Life as a duke is preferable to the life of a bandit, but life as a king would suit me better. By the grace of God and St. Peter, I rule Apulia and Calabria, but with the grace of a few old friends from my days as a highwayman, I could rule the entirety of the kingdom of Sicily, no matter what the Pope or the Emperor thinks. Time to get to work. So we have three options here. We can either leave the Pope and uh, the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire alone, not worry about them. We get a small army and a few claims. We can choose to leave the Holy Roman Empire alone, 
but we'll get a press claim on the Duchy of Benevento, which is where Rome is. Uh, the Pope will hate our guts for that, but we do get a, a decent event army for it. Or we can decide that we're going to take both of them and more. We get a massive army in Apulia of event troops. We get press claims on Spolito and Benveni Benevito. And uh, both of them hate our guts. Which, I mean, we're not here to make friends. We're here to make war. So all of it and more shall be mine. Friends was last week. Yeah. Yeah, we did friends. Now it's time for foes. Yeah, this, this morning we woke up and chose violence. We are choosing violence. Okay, so let's see. We've got Salerno... Declare war. We already have a claim against the principality. And we vastly outnumber him. He's uh, he's a pushover. Let's go ahead and move our rally point close to the border here. We will raise our troops right here. Move them into Salerno. And right off the bat, we've trashed his army. And this siege is going to go real quick. So. Golden Glade says, I mean, friends are just enemies. You haven't subjugated yet. And that exactly. Is accurate. Exactly. And look, just like that, we've already claimed our first piece of land. How easy is that? It's beautiful. I mean, well, technically it's still his land. He just bends the knee to us. Same difference, right? Okay. Napoli. We have a claim on that. Let's go ahead and sweep in. And uh, your army will raise at wherever your rally point is. A lot of players like to use multiple rally points. I'm quite lazy. I just have one and then I move it around to wherever I need to move my troops to. Same. That's exactly the same I do. <laughs> so... We're going to hold control while we click raise all here. That'll prevent us from splitting into separate armies. Just one big clump of violence. Okay. It won't take terribly long to raise these troops, so we'll lower the speed. He's raising his troops. But it's not going to be enough. We outnumber him by a pretty significant amount. We're going to kick his army's teeth in, and then we're going to take his land. Violence I'm sure is fun. The Pope's going to roll over just as easily. Oh, yeah, the Pope's not a threat at all. I mean, I mean, let's take a look. He's got 3,600 troops and only 3,600 troops. And, and no way he can magically pull more into existence. How rich is the Pope right now? I was just going to say, how, how how big is the bank of Pope? Well, the, the, the bigger the Pope's bank is, the more likely he is to hire mercenaries when you declare war on him. And with the amount of money he has right now, he can pull out quite a few of them. So the Pope's strength is always deceptive. What you see is not necessarily what you're going to get. And just like that, we've won another war. And this time we take the land directly. However, since we just sieged it, the control is zero. So we get basically nothing from this land. So we're going to go over to our council. We're going to take our marshal and tell him to increase control. And, oh, well, hold on. Tell him to increase control in there. We got to let it update first. So, it's going to take seven years, but over the course of that seven years, this land will slowly provide more taxes and levies to us. Absolutely worth doing. Now, if I recall correctly, it's increased control that also will have a chance of removing negative modifiers of on uh, uh, baronies, which could be really useful. I will take your word for that, because I tend to ignore the negative modifiers on my baronies. But if it's bad, you know, that's not my problem. That's somebody else's problem. <laughs> just just give me my gold. Everything else is, that's that's on you. Okay, now we want to go ahead and start taking a swing at Capua here, but we can't because our armies are raised. So, let's go ahead and disband that. It's pretty straightforward. Raise it up here. We'll go ahead and declare war for the Duchy of Capua. Now, I do see factions being created against us. See, factions are an issue. If they end up with more military strength than you, they will try to press their demands. But the goal here in this specific playthrough we're doing is to expand violently, live fast, die young, leave a mangled corpse. So this is not necessarily the optimal way to play if you want to have a stable realm. We're going for a large realm. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and raise our armies again. Go ahead and tell them to move into Capua. It'll take six days for the army to raise, at which point they'll ever be able to move. Here they go. Ah, oh, it's like taking candy from a baby. It's beautiful. Oh, my daughter grew up. Wonderful. So we'll let that happen. How long do we have to siege here? Four months. Well, let's go ahead and bump up to speed five because that'll make it go a lot faster. Sicilian culture is spreading. 
Do we have siege engines at this point? We do. We have uh, catapults, I believe. Mangonels. And we have somewhere we can station them. That's a, that's a good call. Because we finally took uh, Napoli and we have a, a, another direct holding. So Now, since we took this land here, there's no undefended land from the defender. So we have 100% war score. We can enforce demands right now, end the war instantly, no problem. However, we captured his son. So what we're going to do first is ransom him for 94 gold. And once that's accepted, come on. We still have a 100% war score. So that was just a, a free 100 gold there. And we're going to take that gold. And we are going to spend it on more future violence. Go ahead and raise those. Oh, the reinvestment. Yes, exactly. Gold you're not spending on men at arms is gold you're not spending on declaring war. Gotta, gotta spend money to make money. Exactly. Now, when you're expanding like this, do you like to make duchies as you go along to increase your legitimacy? Or do you prefer to just let it all, them all squabble? I prefer to let them squabble simply because creating duchies is expensive. And uh, considering that we're frequently raising our armies and pushing our military costs through the roof, we want to keep the amount of gold we have in reserve as high as we can because once we start hitting negatives, that will impact our ability to declare war. We want to uh, keep a strong amount of momentum going throughout all of this. So let's see. What do we need for Sicily now? We're most of the way there. Let's see. What are the requirements here? We want them. We just need 500 gold. Pretty straightforward. So, what are some fun ways we can make money here while continuing our basically a crime spree across southern Italy? Imprison Pope, ransom Pope. If we move fast enough on the Pope, we can probably probably beat him up before his mercenaries can be fully mustered. This is probably a really bad idea. Like all of my Terrible idea. all of my experience in CK tells me not to do this, but we're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna do it anyway. We're gonna declare war. We're gonna... oh no, we can't. Okay. Oh, we can, but it'll uh, rock our devotion level. We don't have enough piety for this, but we can send ourselves into the into negatives on that. But in return, it uh, knocks our devotion level down from dutiful to sinner. I'm not sure we want to do that just yet. Sounds like a bad idea. Have you really played CK3 if you haven't declared war against the papacy at least once? You've experienced CK3, but you haven't played it until you declared war on the Pope and gone, where the hell did all these troops come from? Yep. What are the chances of capturing? They're decent. I mean, capturing the Pope is definitely possible. And if you can do it, that's a that's a very hefty ransom. I just don't think we can handle it at this particular stage. Uh, the Pope is a... Oh, no. He took a, a hefty hit on his gold there. He won't be able to magic up too many mercenaries. What's his troop oh. quality? His troop quality is good. But with our allies, we might be able to swing this. Hey, guys, we're going to war against the Pope. Everyone gets nervous. Uh, we should be nervous. Like I said, this is a terrible idea. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. All right, chat. Let us know if we should do this or not. We, we can do this the safe way, or we can do this the really exciting way. We can do it the boring way or the super cool way, gang. Yeah. There is a wrong answer, just to be clear. Dismantle the papacy. I don't know if we can do that as a Catholic. Let's uh, let's go through and see if we can betroth some kids off because we're going to need some hefty alliances here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Duke William, he's not busy right now. He can help us out. Blood for the blood gods. We are not followers of the blood gods this time around, but... Honorary. Honorary. We'll make it work. Who are you? Oh, Duke Bratislav. We'll be showing him off at some point in the next couple of weeks. You're like, I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and form these alliances as quickly as we can. And that will give us some extra fighting power against the Pope. Because he he's, he's pretty broke. He's not going to be able to hire a whole bunch of mercenaries. I think we can take him. It's going to knock us down to center. But I think it's worth it. I mean, we are attacking the Pope, so fair. I, right. But, you know, if God wanted him to be Pope, he'd be able to beat us. So let's find out what the big man thinks. Go ahead and uh, raise our armies. We're going to go through here and check our allies that we can call to war. Calling allies into an offensive war will cost you prestige based on the allies' rank. But we have a, we have a good amount of prestige here. I think we can manage it. So let's go ahead and call these in. Duke William. Yeah, he's not busy. He, he can definitely uh, swing down here and help us. Oh, we have a daughter who needs to marry, so let's go ahead and uh, bring in somebody from the HRE. God says no more border war. <laughs> oh, there's going to be a lot of border war by the time this stream is over. Oh, no, we lost a level of devotion. Okay. Now, before the Pope can excommunicate us, which is extremely likely... Let's go ahead and call in this last ally, because once we're excommunicated, we basically have a target painted on our backs by all of Christendom. So we need to go ahead and take advantage of stuff that requires a high opinion now. All right. Here, yep, there's the Pope's army. Ray's over there for some reason. I'll take it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We got it. We're good. Ah, uh, and already these allies are calling us into other wars. Will Assad, just because... Yeah, I know, right? That's okay. The Pope's army is about to crash into ours, but we are the defenders, and we're defending in Rome, and uh, their troops are significantly lower quality. We should be able to win this, and if we can kill the initial doomstack that the Pope put together, we're going to win. And we've got some friendship events popping up. We're not terribly worried about those right now. This is a, a Marshall stream. So we'll focus more on the war side. This is going to be a close battle. We are going to take hits here. Uh, we broke the Pope's army, though. Oh, boy. So we're going to chase this army now because we don't have enough men to take Rome. Uh, that's that's just not going to happen. We don't have the people needed for it. So as we head back into our lands, our troops will reinforce and we can take extra pot shots at the Pope's army. And each time back we do here, that... Give me your hat. I want that hat. Okay, we're at 45% war score. This is going well. Allies have shown up. That's yeah, good. That's surprising. It usually takes them a little bit longer than that. Let's see. Are you know, we I know there's a lot of people who complain about uh, allies in Crusader Kings, but I've always found that they work quite well. Uh, I've had allies swoop in and rescue me at the last minute. Yeah, they're, they're basically going to follow us, our army here, because we are the war leaders. So they're going to follow our lead as we go through this. Once we move back in towards Rome, they'll spread out. They'll try to take what they can and just generally be helpful, which is fantastic. We have another martial perk to unlock now. We're going to spend this on Serve the Crown, which will increase our natural dread, as well as our control growth per month. Dread is a great way to basically terrorize your vassals into submission. It's, uh, it's fantastic to have if you're spreading extremely quickly and causing control to plummet across your entire realm. Okay. So let's try to head back to Rome, because with our allies now, we should have enough men to take it. Okay. Is this that game where you marry your sister and then she cheats on you? Yeah. Yeah, this is the game. Uh, let's see. We're going to keep an eye on the Pope's army because while we're doing this... You're, 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 they're thinking of Stellaris, clearly. Oh, yeah, I know. You can do that in Hoi, can't you? Marry your sister in Hoi. Sengoku. I, I still hold out hope for Sengoku, too. We got the Pope. We got the Pope. Hey! Give me your hat. That's I don't think fantastic. we can take his hat. All right. Uh... Oh, no, the Pope is broke. I forgot. Oh, the, the Pope. The Sims doesn't allow incest, unfortunately. It did for a little while, but they claimed it was a bug. I call them cowards. 
Okay, so we'll ransom the Pope. That'll give us a little bit of extra money, which will help us along in our goal to uh, form the Kingdom of Sicily. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we'll have enough war score without the Pope being uh, a captive. However, our allies already have uh, Tivoli mostly sieged, so we can just step over and handle that immediately. Yeah, we're at 90% war score because we ransomed the Pope. Oh, almost, almost. Uh, we'll head down here and we'll take this other barony. And then that should push us to 100% war score. I'm going to be honest, this is the earliest I've seen uh, someone depose the Pope. It's great, isn't it? So, <laughs> We're going to enforce our demands. Very aggressive. We did it. Hey, and we got extra legitimacy from it, too. Who are we fighting here? Oh, yeah, that's uh, that's our ally. We're ostensibly supposed to be helping him, but... Yes, this is new content. We're showing off the Legends of CK3 update, which will be coming uh, later in May. We did get a warning that our troops will take about 46 days to raise again since we're already at war. However, it's an allies war and we're uh, we're fair weather friends. Like they need something from us. Tough shit. Not my problem. Okay. So in just a couple months here, we'll have the money needed to form Sicily. Looking that... good. Yeah. I mean, this is going great. Distressingly well. Ah, there we go. I was wondering when this would show up. We do have uh, a lot of factions popping up right now. Most of them are too weak at the moment. Uh, as we continue our violent expansion across Italy, uh, more people will pile into factions against us, and we may have to worry about that. For now, they're not a problem. Well, what about the island of Sicily? Yes, that is our target. We're going to wait until now to begin worrying about it though that's it we're a king that's wonderful we're going to jump into the royal court we're going to set our artifacts if you're not familiar with the royal court or how its mechanics work uh check last week's stream that should be up as a, a vod on youtube and twitch probably probably on twitch but we're not going to go in that now because we have a whole lot of war to declare oh and we already have a pile of money just sitting in our prison let's go ahead and uh Cash those checks, huh? A lot of money. I know, right? Just just sitting there. What else have we got? Uh, we have too many duchies. We need to go ahead and address that because that will make people hate our guts. We so don't. Quickly. Yeah, we don't even hold any land in Benevito, so there's no reason for us to have that duchy. We'll get into this guy. He's very angry at us, but I'm pretty sure it's because we hold his duchy. No, he hates us for other reasons. Too many duchies, cultural acceptance. Uh, he's ambitious. Bellicose, he wants a seat on the council. Well, let's check. Oh, he would be an excellent steward. Okay. Landolf, welcome aboard. Still hates All us. All you steward from now on. Exactly. We do need to get rid of a couple more duchies here. Oh, uh, he's infirm. Oh, that sucks for him. Uh, Less bad for us. I mean, yeah, thoughts and prayers. Uh, Apulia. <laughs> uh, Apulia will be our primary duchy. Uh, Capua, I think we hold one piece of land there. And Salerno, we hold nothing. So we will go ahead and hand off Salerno to our brother-in-law, who uh, seems a little upset with us. I'm sure there's no downside whatsoever to giving duchies to people who have legitimate reason to hate our guts. Okay, and that opened up a council position. We need a new spy master. Uh, great. What's your What's your opinion on this one, Josh? Uh, let me see. I I would honestly just go for a powerful vassal who's decent at it, even if they only have a nine. But I always I I'm I'm an advocate of giving bad people uh, important positions. Mm -hmm. Because it's fun. See, for any other position, I would probably agree here, but we're basically angering the entire world against us, so it may be beneficial to have a, a high score spy master here. But as long it's also, as they like you. Right, right. If your spy master hates your guts, you have a big problem, and you're probably not going to be along for this world. So always make sure that your spy master is happy with you. Same for your cupbearer and bodyguards. You don't want to get a uh, Roman emperor. And physician. Oh, yeah, the physician, too. Which I don't think we have one. 
No, positions cost money. Oh. Okay, so uh, let's go with Count Robert here. Oh man, he would probably make a pretty good marshal. We do have a good marshal though, so we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about it. Put him in that position, and because now he has a council position as a powerful vassal, he's much happier with us. He's he's thrilled with us. Do we have the skilled outsider decision available? We can we can probably manage that somehow. We're at war. Oh, fun. And we're too small for skilled outsiders, so that's that's not an option we can take quite yet. Okay, so now it's time to unify Sicily down here. We have the kingdom title, but not all of the land is controlled by us. That's a problem we need to solve. So let's go after Deke Yusuf, declare of war. Uh, we're going to seize the sheikdom because it's de jure. And as a county, that would probably... That would make him a vassal. I don't really know if we want him as a vassal or if we should take the land outright. If we declare a holy war, which we can't. Okay, so never mind. Uh, we do What's have a claim. current crown authority? That's a good question. We could bump that up and then revoke it. And since he's not of the same faith, we'd be able to do it freely and he couldn't complain. Exactly. I mean, he could rebel, but you know he couldn't like legally complain. The only downside is increased crown authority means less happy vassals. And we've already made our vassals pretty damn mad. Do traits play a bigger or smaller role in loyalty? Uh, your personality traits will have a significant impact on what other people think of you. We, we're pretty much a bastard. Everybody hates us because we're, we're arbitrary, we're greedy, we're ambitious, and we're not super subtle about it. We've made it clear that we will step on other people to get what we want, and other people respond accordingly to that. So we, we are not going to be a very popular person, but is it better to be loved or feared, right? We're going to work on building up that dread, because if we can take this guy in uh, the war here... Okay, we'll, we'll bump up to limited crown authority. Then we'll do a de jure claim on the sheikdom. That will make him our vassal, and then we will immediately try to revoke the title from him. Now, if he refuses, that just means more war, and the yes. outcome is putting him in jail. Assuming nobody else joins him, what we're banking on here is him being unpopular within our realm due to the religious differences. That's true. If he joins a faction immediately, it could get a little more complicated. Yeah. Complicated is what we're going here, going for here. Okay, and oh yeah, we still have our powerful factions. Uh, the other factions disbanded though. No complaints here. Let's speed this along. Oh, we took so Balan. The only, only faction, a bunch of peasants. Yeah. The, the other guys That's decided. Shocking. Yeah, I, right. So I think we're just going to have to anger people a little bit more. Uh, this guy was already fighting off another war, and that war is now targeting us. So let's go ahead and... Oh, and the uh, the guy we allied with is now complaining that we're not helping him. Uh, we'll tell him, oh yeah, we're definitely sitting dudes. Don't worry about it. We're not. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, I mean... My defense here is that Duke Robert was historically and as portrayed in game a very selfish and self-serving person so it makes sense for me to play the same way as well that's, that's excellent justification yeah that's that's the excuse we're going with uh oh here come the pheasants okay so we I now have smell a... them from here yes the peasants are upset with us but we're, we're gonna go handle it we're going to peacefully disperse them we won our war against uh, that fella. We'll head up here and look at that. We dealt with the peasants too. And now we're going to execute this guy because as a peasant leader, if we execute him, we get additional dread. We're basically using him to serve as an example to other peasants who may think of overstepping. So. Questioning authority. Exactly bringing up uncomfortable questions like why do we have to pay taxes and why are we all dying 
<laughs> Why are my teeth falling out? It's not my problem. <laughs> RP is a valid excuse. RP is the main excuse, for me at least. All right, uh, let's see. How is our things going right now? Sicily is mostly unified. The Pope's is still very, very upset with us. We don't have a cast a spell on him because I would really like to fight him again. If we could take Rome, that would be fun. Is Italia a reasonable goal for us? I don't think it is because everything we hold right now is de jure Byzantium. So if we wanted to go for the empire title of Italia, we would have to basically start fresh. That's, that's a lot of counties we have to conquer. And most of them will belong to the Holy Roman Empire. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's see. We have the Duchy of Spoleto. I don't think we need that. Hmm. So where do we go from here now that we've unified Sicily? What do you think, Josh? Well, I'm just taking a look. I mean, Croatia's looking mighty nice. Right across the gulf there. Hmm. We don't have a cast of Spelly on them. I think we should continue unifying Sicily and then cross over to Carthage. We'll, we'll reenact sense. some Punic Wars. Okay. Now, now, if memory serves me correct, that uh, collection of I, uh, that large landmass to the west of Sicily, forgive my lack of knowledge of geography, uh, but uh, isn't there a gold mine on there? There is. This is uh, Sardinia and Corsica. Sardinia, that's the one. And right down here, there's a potential gold mine, which would be a fantastic source of income. Oh, they've already built it here. So we need to take Cagliari. Cagliari is not an incredibly powerful realm. And he's off gallivanting in Iberia for some reason. Let's go ahead and fabricate a claim on Cagliari. Because we want that gold mine, because that's, that's a lot of extra money. It's a lot of extra money. There's yes. only, like, a handful of gold mines in the entire game, and oof, they are valuable. Yeah, we have one person asking about uh, cultural hybridization with uh, Sicilian. Let's see. We don't have enough cultural acceptance there. That's something we could probably work on over time, but I don't think it's really something we can do in the time allotted for this stream. Uh, we can at least try, though. Let's promote cultural acceptance with Sicilian culture. Sadly, a lot of the uh, uh, aspects of the game involving uh, altering traditions would probably take more than the hour we have allotted. Yeah. Any sort of cultural changes, specifically with uh, divergences or hybridization, boosting cultural acceptance, these are long-term objectives, so they will take anywhere from 30, 50, 100 plus years. They're not meant to be something you do on a weekend getaway to Sicily. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's go ahead and pick up the rest of these. We have two domain spots left, so we will use the claim CB as uh, winning those wars will actually pass the counties over to us and then we don't have to deal with that vassal. Since these are both single county realms, we will declare war on both of them at once, raise our army, defeat one, and then move directly to the next. That's efficiency. We're not taxing our clan vassals, so that's okay, because we're not going to have a clan vassal for much longer. Uh, strict organization is definitely a good perk to take in this scenario to increase the rate at, uh, of our control gain. So we'll go ahead and take that perk. Uh, random events, not relevant to what we're doing. We did get an enemy war banner. I think we have a slot for it in our royal court. Is it worth it, though? Number of knights plus two. Yes, it is worth it. So we will make it a fine addition to our collection. We'll go to our inventory, royal courts, and we'll throw this right up on the wall. And just like that, we get two extra knights. And the potential for two extra knights. Okay, we've won our first war, so we'll go ahead and move over to the next area. Enforce order bands. Now we control that title. Uh-oh, I'm sick. We'll send for a physician. We won the other war. We'll enforce our demands. No. Sicily is now unified. I mean, that's great. Too bad he's not going to live. 
<laughs> Shit happens. That's we'll be all right. That's how. That's that's just how CK rules. Yeah, I mean, you win some, you lose some. Speaking of losing some, our ally is not doing too well over here. But yeah, that is a that just, is a them problem. They're just sitting over there. Any day now, the Sicilians will come and save us. Any day. Uh, they're they're going to be asking where uh, Gondor was pretty soon here. Kingdom titles, Sicily, because someone pointed out that we do not have Malta. Do we not have Malta? I think we do. Let's check. There's a chord on the keyboard. Oh, no. Just a moment. The Sheikdom of Malta. Where is that at? Hmm. We do control it. That was... No, we don't. How terrible. Oh. Thank you for pointing that out. We, we can't let this, this go unanswered here. We'll seize the Sheikdom. Malta is doing its best to look small and non-threatening. It worked. It worked. I wouldn't have noticed if it wasn't pointed out. So, so thank you, great for that. So we'll head over to Malta as soon as these guys have finished raising. Three months. Oof. Okay, we're gonna pay for our court physician. Hopefully, get treated for our illness here. Court physician's already already doing well. Mm. We're gonna there stay. There you out of go. That, that was quick. We haven't even sieged the holding, but he was leading his troops and we captured him in that battle. So the war is now over. We, we, we win. We're winners today. Okay, so we're still fabricating the claim there. This would be two for two uh, streams of us reaching our goals with time to spare. Right. I'm just, it bodes ill for Matilda. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah, Matilda's gonna throw us a few wrenches here we have a claimant for uh, the byzantine empire if we wanted to take a swing at an empire here's a good chance we could take some counties from them we get an extra three thousand men if we do it we get an entire kingdom if we put him on the throne do we want another kingdom i think we want another kingdom we're we're playing the Marshall Blobbing character today, so I think I think it's time to blob. Let's go after the Byzantine Empire. Perfect. No one has ever had a bad time doing that. I mean, it's not like anybody from Italy ever swarmed over and attacked Constantinople before. They'll never see it coming. Do we have a commander for our army? Oh no, that's just our free troops. Sorry. Yes, we're we're still raising our army. When it's done, we'll make sure we have the best commander for the job. Wow, we got a good amount of troops here. Best commander's me. We can call allies to war. Hey, William's not busy anymore. Oh, what happened to our other vessel? So we'll call in Vratislav, who is also a king now. Good for him. Three of the bookmark characters went from duchies to kingdoms already, so this, you this mean is great. From rags to riches? <laughs> <laughs> That's, I said the thing. You did. Wow, Byzantium was bigger than I realized. <laughs> that's that's a lot of purple. Uh, how many troops do they have? Oh no, they're they're a paper tiger. We'll swoop directly into Constantinople here. Okay, here comes Bohemia. Here comes England. I'm getting a bit of a historical deja vu from this. <laughs> Okay. Do we have enough troops? Oh no! That's a, is that sickness? This is sickness. Oh we, no! Uh, we, we picked up Typhus from the siege camp. Oh damn it! We're gonna die. Oh no! Okay. Drastic. Yeah, it's too late for caution. Robert cannot die right now. It's a miracle. Oh. Cool. Wow! I didn't what? even lose a leg or anything. This is the best court physician ever. I love this. That's hilarious. You get a raise. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Where are our allies? Come on. We're going to take Constantinople. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
one of our uh, vassals is utilizing the Pope to get claims on some of our other titles. We're gonna we're we're gonna do some heinous stuff to that guy once we're done in Constantinople. Our allies have arrived. Thank wow. Goodness. Apparently they just had a newborn Basilius. Oh, this is beautiful. This it's, is all it's going working too out well. shockingly it's well. Too well. Okay, so we get a strong hook, loyalty on the new Byzantine Emperor. We get Epirus in return for our efforts here. Oh man, the, the control rate on these should be good too, since we didn't have to conquer them. I don't know, the control on those is terrible. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just really kind of flabbergasted by how this uh, really, really went our way. I know. It's, uh, we're going to get a curveball, a really bad one at some point, and it's going to... We're going to play as Vratislav game over in like the first 10 minutes. I can feel it. I can feel we're it. We're play, playing a one-year-old for the entire stream. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about regencies. Yeah. Long-term entrenched regencies. Yeah, so, since we did get the Kingdom of Epirus, we have a lot of extra land here. Uh, a competent player would go through and actually evaluate the value of these counties and then assign them based on that. I just want that domain number to get back down to five. So we're we're just handing it out. That's that's how I do it. Exactly. We just gotta just gotta get rid of all of this. So we've got two Coast kingdoms. Like yeah, the, the monkey paw is curling for y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to think Robert might be a little overpowered. <laughs> Lots of extra vassal notifications. I'm mad at the Pope because he granted a claim on one of my titles to one of my vassals. That's that's rude. Who Step did he one, kill the vassal. Step two, get the Pope again. <laughs> this guy, our steward, he's the one who got the claim on one of our titles. Steward. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, revoke the county of Benevento. He will not accept. This is going to cause a rebellion. I think rebellions are an important aspect to cover because this is ostensibly a tutorial stream, so... Are we still in war? Uh, let's check. No, we are not. Okay, good. However, there was a type if you were involved hungry. even in an allies war and then you go to, like, deal with a civil war, you could find yourself waiting an exceptionally long time to let your troops rally. Yes. Uh, wow, Byzantium's having a great time over here. Again, that's a them problem. We only have to worry about it if it bleeds over here. I mean, if, you got the typhus, and you're like, eh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, barely a cough. So we're going to revoke this title. He will not accept that. However, since we have a claim on the title, it won't uh, cause a tyranny yet. Most of our vassals hate our guts anyway, so he's liable to get assistance. I mean, look at this guy. He can barely manage his own lands. Yeah. I gotta say, for an infirm character, his stewardship is, like, gorgeous. I know. It should be that high. How much of a... You do take a pretty hefty stewardship hit for being infirm. Minus Let's go ahead and four, that. minus six? It's uh, minus three. Oh, okay. It's... He has a lot of bonuses there. But it doesn't matter, because we're gonna kick his ass and chop his head off. And there we go. The rebellion has begun. counting that. Mm-hmm. However, this is uh, technically a defensive war, so we can call our allies in for free here. It's always nice. Wow, that's a that's a lot of rebels. Half of our council council revolted. I'm surprised he didn't join them. We're going to uh, shore up our council real quick. We still have factions, independence factions. My God, an alliance just expired with William of Normandy. Oh shit. Uh. Oh, I have too many duchies. That's probably why they all revolted. Awkward. Uh, we'll just go ahead and hand that out. He didn't revolt, so... Like, thanks for being loyal, I guess. Just stack all these duchies on this guy. Yeah, there you go. Have fun. You deal with that. Oh, no. We just made him really powerful. I didn't think that through at all. <laughs> Keep him happy. Oh, our alliance expired. With Prince Richard. 
What the hell happened to England? We got to look at this. Damn, William had a bad time. Drank himself to death at 46. Uh, man, I see my dad everywhere I turn. Anyway. Uh, let's see. We still got Vratislav, and he's still got plenty of troops. He's got a lot of troops. I don't think we need William for this. The rags so. of richest characters coming in on the in the clinch. Go ahead and raise our troops here. Five months to raise them. My God. Uh, we got a problem here. This guy's going to be here in nine days. So maybe not raise them there. Yeah, I, I tried to, dis to disband them, but there's hostile armies here, so I can't. Oh, no. Oh, uh, man. And oh, he's leading no. the army. Raise the troops. Raise them all. Okay, we did it. We did it. Oh, it's all good. Oh, goodness. Why are we? Why do we have no supply here? We're not over the supply limit. Interesting. Go ahead and take that next perk just to keep going down the tree. We goofed, but we can recover from it. Consequences will be the same. We're fine. Yeah, we're we fine. got it's this. It's just a minor hiccup. Yeah. There's rebels swarming all across southern Italy, but we'll be okay. We'll be okay. I like to prefer them as mobile dread modifiers. That's a brilliant way of looking at it. See, fortunately, the, the rebel troops aren't really stacking up on each other properly. They're separate. They're disorganized. They're in disarray. So I, I don't think they're going to be a threat here. I think we've I think we've got this. And they, they, our allies are here, so that's good. I can see them yeah, seizing. That's, that's helpful. They're going after Spoleto. Oh, they're going to try. Oh, shit. That's my capital. No, we can't let them take that. Get back over here. Get out of here. Shoot. Oh, we have another faction. Wow, we have a Liberty faction. Ultimatum in eight months. Sure, see, this is fine. the downside to, to rapid expansion. Sicilian culture is still spreading. We, we need to win this quickly. Oh, hey, we finally got the uh, the claim on uh, Cagliari. We'll go ahead and accept that. Oh, yeah. I forgot we were doing that. Okay. Thankfully, we still have a large war chest. We do. We do. We have a, a decent amount of gold. The rebels are pretty much dealt with. But the main advantage of a rebellion like this is that when it's over, you get to restructure your internal borders a bit. It, it's a really easy way to get rid of everybody who hates you in one fell swoop. Now, do you like when passing out titles to make like one or like a small handful of vassals really powerful, but well taken care of and accommodated? Or do you like to spread it out? I prefer to have them spread out because uh, the more individual vassals you have, the easier it is to keep all of them repressed to the point where they can't really do anything. I'm the opposite. I like really focusing on cultivating long-term relationships with different houses. But I mean, that's the good thing about Crusader Kings is both are completely valid. Yes. Uh, we've we've won the rebellion. We enforced demands. Everybody who participated is now imprisoned. A lot of jail time. Hey, oh, yeah. I have a question. Can you appoint one of these jokers as an executioner? I probably could. Let's see. And I think... Because I think you could get extra dread if you do a public execution. You know what, Landolf? I think I have a plan for you. We'll take <laughs> Benevento back. He's no longer a duke. He's a nobody now. So we'll negotiate his release. Renounce claims. Oh, no. He's he's not going to accept that. Okay, we'll recruit, employee executioner. He'll still have the claims, but he won't be able to do anything about them. So, just like that. Uh, did we get any Glorious. of his family members? No, we didn't get any of his family members. We were, we were this close to being able to do something really twisted. He will, you will now be executed by this infirm 60 year old. Have a good day. I, I believe we got 500 legitimacy for that war, not 50. It was, it was a pretty big rebellion. Uh, let's go ahead and start revoking uh, all of these duchies. We'll uh, redistribute. Our legitimacy is really high. 
Oh, yeah, it's maxed out. I mean, nothing says you're a legitimate ruler like just steamrolling half the friggin' world at this point. Okay, so we've revoked these titles. That leaves us with a lot of extra duchies that we now have to get rid of. Who should we hand Benevento to at this point? Let's see if we can find... Oh, here we go. My brother. That's that's an easy one. We'll give him that duchy. He becomes our vassal. He gains lots of opinion. Look at that. He's happy. He loves us. We're, we're being a good brother. A couple... It's all about family. Exactly. Is his problem. So Ghostbane wants to know how is legitimacy determined? Uh, it seems very random. Like I've expected a lot more for being able to put down half a realm's worth of rebels. Uh, I think uh, balance wise, we wanted legitimacy to be much easier to lose than it is to gain, especially at higher tiers. Uh, we're always open to more balance passes on that though. So if you see something that you think is incorrect or could be improved, drop a thread on our forums, make a, make a post in our feedback channels on discord. We're, we're listening and we're definitely open to changing that if we think it can be improved. Now, I'm not sure if I want to give this to my nephew because he's kind of a shithead. But he is a coward. He is. That's that's a really good point you bring up. Cowardly vassals are a lot less likely to uh, raise their hand against you. They're, they're not going to try to square up and cause some shit. So we'll just... This is uh, also... That point is a really good reason to reach out and uh, offer to be the uh, caretaker for your vassals, like heirs, if you can pull it off yes. and raise them to be cowards. Yes, that's that's a, a very Machiavellian long-term strategy. <laughs> you train them wrong as a joke. Yeah. Hey, thanks for trusting me with your kid. I made him legally stupid. Here you go. Fantastic. Okay. Well, he's happy with us now. We gave him a, a county, a duchy. He loves us. He's cowardly. This is great. Oh, he is vengeful, though. Those are two unfortunate traits. Cowardly and vengeful. What's the other one God, he's got it, there? He's got diligent and impatient. It's got to suck to be this guy. I feel bad for you, dude. Okay, we do have other pieces of land here. Oh, look at that. I, I have a, a son and knight who can use some land. Nobody's ever regretted landing their children. There we go. And we're back I down to a manageable domain. All children. Oh, like, no. I could have like 10 sons. I'll give them all land. I'll go to war to get land for my children. And watch everything bubble up when I die. Just for clarity, yes, that was a Kung Pao reference. I love that movie. It, uh, it's, it heavily inspires me. Okay, let's see. Did I give away one of my core counties? What did I do here? I think I messed up somewhere. Okay, so we're going to station. Yeah, yeah, I think I gave away the, the counties that my guys were stationed in. So we gotta we gotta shift some stuff around. That's okay. Not a huge deal. We do have a bit of money. I don't think anybody around us can really threaten us at this point. What about the Pope? Who? Oh, that guy with the funny hat. I'm feeling a little vengeful towards the Pope because he, he granted that claim. But I don't think we have time to do anything about it. We have five minutes left in the stream. We're not going to be able to fabricate a claim. We have to we bug my turn. We that uh, gold mine we were planning on. Did we get that already? We did not. That's, that's a, a good point. Let's go ahead and swing over here. Why is my prestige so low? What happened there? Yeah, we only got a few minutes left. We we accomplished our campaign goal here. Normally, max execution is a bad idea, but it's also really funny, and we're about to abandon this save in four minutes. So <laughs> let's get that body count up. There we go. Familial Kinslayer. We messed up. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's see how many factions we can spawn in the next four minutes here. I don't know. There's no one left to be in factions. Oh, I should have made him accept the uh, the executioner role before I did that. Hmm. Oh well. Anyway, we're That's going to take Cagliari because again, it, it yeah, it has a gold mine there. We're going to take a fame penalty. It doesn't matter. There's gold in them, our hills. 
Let's go. Cleaning house, that's right. No, cleaning up is... That, that happens after. <laughs> that's more kills than in the war. <laughs> oh, Matilda grew up. How good for her. Now, one of my favorite things to do is after a fight, you can go and look at the individual kills by your knights. Yes. That's always fun. Yeah, there, there's a, a lot of fatality information and things like that being tracked by the game, and there are various places where you can see it. Just out of curiosity, let's see what we uh, we got here. Okay, well, we know the 9th of October is a dark day in history. Who did we get before that? Just one person. I guess Robert was a nicer guy than I thought. Just because you're a bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. I'm pretty sure we're a bad guy at this point. Okay. So we we have the gold mine now. Uh, I think it's on fire. Oh, no, we have a vassal here who has it. Uh, we don't want him to have the gold mine, so we'll go ahead and take that. I am bad, and that is good. Yes. We are we are playing a very horrible person in this campaign, but I think we've uh, just about wrapped it up. Uh, we did quite well. We did like, pretty that well. Was some... I can't believe we lived through Typhus. That is probably the biggest surprise for this run. Like, we were already in bad shape. Typhus came in. We had the, the warning, you're going to die really soon icon pop up, and our physician just pulls it out of a hat. It was It was magical. I love it. We, too bad we executed them as a witch later. Did we? No, no, we didn't. We can. That'd be a, Let's that'd go. Be a great way to go. Damn. She got away from us. That's all right. Now, keep in mind, at this point, the, the run is over, so we're just setting stuff on fire on the way out. Okay, so we started as a duchy. We unified Sicily. We threw down with the Pope. We kicked his ass. Uh, we took uh, the rest of Sicily proper, the island there, and then we helped some random guy take over the Byzantine Empire, and in return got a kingdom granted to us. Uh, staved off a major revolt, rearranged some stuff, and then grabbed uh, a gold mine. Executed I think this a was couple a, of people. Yeah, just one or two. I think this was a pretty successful hour. How's our uh, yeah. guy doing there? He's doing great. Only two civil wars? Byzantium is pretty stable in this game. That's also unusual. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Oh, hold on, hold on. We have a scene for this. Let me, let me push that button. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope that anybody who uh, wasn't clear on how Marshall worked before has a better understanding of how you can just abuse the hell out of men-at-arms and steamroll your neighbors, take advantage of alliances, stuff like that. Uh, come back same time next week. We'll be covering a different one of the Legends of CK3 characters. If you don't know who those are, those are our Rag to Riches bookmark characters who are getting an overhaul in the update we showed today. That update will be available sometime in May. We don't have a confirmed public date yet. Keep an eye on our socials. We'll tell you more as soon as we can. All right. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Goodbye. There's an end button here. Where is it? There it is. Thank you.